All right, procrastination, let's talk about it. It's a big topic. And by the way, we all face it. Uh, it, it is a ever-present, evergreen issue for a reason. And even the people you see on magazine covers, most of them, there are a few mutants, but they all have things they put off. And there are a few different tactics, approaches that I found very helpful that I've borrowed from, whether it's guests on The Tim Ferriss Show or people I interviewed for Tools of Titans, my newest book. Here we go. So down the list. One is break it down into the smallest action conceivable. All right? And there are, there are a few different types here. So if you have a macro goal, which is double the number of podcast downloads per episode. All right. I'm just giving that as an example. Well, we need to modify that to make it really actionable. So the first is making it hyper, hyper specific. All right. So we need a timeline at the very least. So let's say within six months, doubling, and the, this is a real example for me, doubling the number of podcast downloads. Well, downloads are ongoing. So by what point in time? All right. I want to double the number of podcast downloads per episode by week six after publication, and I want to accomplish that within six months. All right. And then we could borrow from David Allen and just ask, what, what, are some of the, what are some of the prerequisites, the component pieces of doing that? Let's, let's break it out into, say, content and organic. You could have paid acquisition. You make a long list of these potential buckets of activities. Uh, from there, you would look at next physical actions. And this is directly from getting things done. And you could apply that to any number of these. Let's just say it's 10 buckets, but you would ask yourself, this is a question I ask myself very often, when I'm procrastinating because there is indecision. And this is a particular breed of procrastination. In other words, if I have 10 things on my to-do list or 10 potential projects I could pursue, what to do in that situation? And what I ask myself is, which one of these, if done, will make the rest irrelevant or easier? This is a key question I ask all the time. Which one of these will make all the rest easier to do, if, if done first, or all of the rest of them irrelevant? Don't even need to do them. That is how I will then hone in on, on one piece of the puzzle. And this can be applied all over the place. But let's just say it's the double of the podcast. It could be losing weight. All right, You can see that's very, very amorphous. We need timelines. We need an amount to lose. And then you want to make it as small as possible. So I'll give you a different example. If you, want to, if you want to start flossing your teeth, who likes flossing their teeth? Pretty much nobody. So how do you start flossing your teeth? Well, you want to make it as easy as possible to develop it as part of your routine, to make it as automatic as anything else that you do consistently. And you could borrow from, say, BJ Fogg, who's done a lot of research at Stanford and elsewhere. Make it as small as possible. Meaning, in the beginning, do less than you are capable of doing. So this is another key when you think something is too big or onerous. So it's too intimidating or it's too much of a pain in the ass. All right. So for flossing, you might say, I'm only going to floss my front two teeth. That's three gaps. That's all you're going to do. And you want to make it, again, as easy as possible. So you might use a water pick or you might use those disposable flossing gadgets so you don't have to do, uh, you know, tourniquets on your fingers, which is, is also one of the side effects of flossing that deters people. Make it as easy as possible. Now, this applies to a lot more than flossing. So I've talked to many of the people for, say, Tools of Titans, people who are eight-time New York Times bestselling authors or prolific musicians, uh, prolific music producers like Rick Rubin, who's legendary. Uh, and it all comes down to tiny homework assignments. So Rick, if he has a stuck artist, for instance, he will say, can you get me one word or one line that you might like for this song that you're working on by tomorrow? Is that possible? Many, many homework assignments. All right. So with a creative project in the beginning, that's one. It's related to a piece of advice that I got from Neil Strauss, eight-time New York Times bestselling author. He's written for the New York Times. He's written for, the Rolling, for Rolling Stone magazine. And that is lower your standards. So he doesn't believe in writer's block. He says your standards are just too high. You're creating performance anxiety for yourself. So the advice that I got from another writer, which uh, matches with that, is two crappy pages per day. So a lot of people are like, I'm going to kill it. I need an ambitious goal. Let me do 1,500 words, 2,000 words per day for this book I'm working on. Well, there's a very high probability that you're going to fall short of that. 
and then you will get demoralized, then you will get intimidated by the task, and then you will start procrastinating. So make the hurdle, make the success threshold really, really low. That's what I've done for my last three books is two crappy pages per day. That's all I need. If I don't end up using them, that's fine. I just need to get out two crappy pages. What ends up happening with the flossing, with the writing, with say exercise? If you're going to exercise, you're making a New Year's resolution, don't make it an hour a day, four times a week. No, 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 no. Ten, and you, if you don't have an exercise habit, five to ten minutes at the gym, three times a week, plenty. And in all of those cases, you will feel successful because you've checked your box for success. And then very often you will exceed that for extra credit, right? You'll be like, well, I'm already at the gym. I'll go for an extra 10 minutes. Well, I'm already flossing my teeth. I'll do an extra four. Well, I've already hit my two pages, but I'm feeling great and I'm in the flow. Maybe I'll do 10, maybe I'll do 20. But it prevents you from feeling like a failure. <laughs> this is very, very important. That is what derails a lot of people. And it also makes the task less intimidating. So there, those are a few recommendations for avoiding procrastination. Some of them are time related. So if you are looking at a task, and we've already talked about chunking it down, if it looks gigantic and onerous, and you calculate in your mind, well, that's probably going to take me 100 hours or three weeks, however you look at it, you don't take the first step because it's, it's like taking a bite out of a whale or something like that. So you could use a technique, for instance, like the Pomodoro technique. And people have interpreted this in different ways, but it effectively means sprints of, say, 20 to 25. Uh, some people do 23 minutes where you're like, all right, I know I'm not going to get this done, but I'm going to sprint for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then take a five-minute break. And then I will sprint again for 20 to 25 minutes. And the magic of those time constraints, I've talked about this a lot as Parkinson's law, but the complexity of a task swelling to fill the time that it's allotted. Once you have these positive constraints, which by the way, for a creative person, very important to have positive constraints. Being able to do anything you want all the time is a recipe for disaster and paralysis and procrastination. Uh, and I'll talk about one more constraint that you can apply. So you have something like the Pomodoro technique. Uh, if it's email related, you can actually use a tool called Email Game. I won't go into a long description, but emailga.me is the URL. You can check that out. It, it avoids the inbox view and forces you to answer sequentially. So I'll let people check that out. That'll probably cut down your email clearing time by 40% or so. The next way that you can apply positive constraint is by building in incentives and consequences. All this means is make yourself socially accountable. And you could use a site like stick, S-T-I-C-K-K.com. You could use coach.me. Having someone else to hold your feet to the fire and keep you accountable uh, for whatever goal you've set for yourself. That could be a check-in via phone. It could be a bet, so a financial component, which is very effective. I've seen uh, uh, high-ranking folks at Google lose 100 plus pounds because they had a bet with a friend. This is what got them started. <clears throat> they were gym buddies. If someone didn't show up, they had to pay the other person a dollar. So it's incredible what a small amount of money can do. You could also put together a betting pool, say five people each put in a hundred bucks and the person who loses the most body fat or improves their body fat percentage using say a DEXA scan by the end of the first quarter gets the 500. That is hugely, hugely effective. And I think in part, not because of the money you will win, but the money you will lose. People work a lot harder uh, to counteract loss aversion, it turns out. So those are uh, a few things that you could utilize. And I'll give you one kind of wacky one that is from uh, Mike Birbiglia, who's one of the most successful comedians on the planet, has done tons of TV, tons of movies, and uh, is, is fantastic at stand-up, does a lot with This American Life. And when he was procrastinating, working on his screenplay, his latest screenplay, he noticed that he, when he was accountable to someone else, he had a meeting. He was never late, he was always early. But when he, when he had a commitment to himself to write, he might put it off for hours. So he took a post-it and he put it next to his bed, and this sounds ludicrous, but it said, Mike, and I think it was three exclamation points, you have a meeting with yourself at 7 a.m. at cafe whatever it was <laughs> where he, he uh, intended to work. And that actually, for whatever weird quirk of human psychology, got him to stay on track for his meeting with himself to write a screenplay. So that's another Jedi mind trick that you might try on yourself. There are many tools in the toolkit, but keep it small, 
keep it defined, rig it so you can win, and when in doubt, figure out a way to create a loss or shame if you don't actually tackle your task and achieve some type of measurable goal by a specific point in time. Thank you.